just got back from dinner, and uh, it was a good dinner, really good dinner. And I just wanted to quickly show a picture of my nephews. The guy in the funky bow tie is Alistair, and cheers out to Alistair, who graduated from Cambridge last fall. And the tall guy, they're both over six feet, is Duncan, who just produced and directed a play at his uh, boarding school. You know, I got something funny. Do I, do I have a piece of spinach? You know, that's a, that's a, da that's a damnest most embarrassing thing when I go out to lunch and come back and get a piece of spinach off of my face. My, my, my. Uh, what I wanted to talk about this afternoon, actually, as you can see, it's evening. I have regular light, which turns red from one side. I've got an IKEA bulb with uh, fluorescent on the other side. And then I've got all the blackness of Colorado behind me. And tonight, I wanted to talk about the experience of having a long-term girlfriend for a long time and not being sure if you want to marry. And one of the philosophies is, if it's gone good for this long, why change anything? Why complicate things? And the second one is, well, you have to provide comfort and sustenance and warmth. You have to build your own nest beyond childbearing or adoption, but build your own nest. And for about nine years, uh, my friend, my girlfriend, <laughs> has been pushing to get married. I don't know who would want to marry. I don't want to marry me. I look, I look, I look at my Don John down there, and he doesn't even really want to get married to anybody. So I think my girlfriend really wanted to from the very beginning. But I think the best thing we ever did, because we've broken up and reunited so much stronger. You know, the scar tissue where on a break is always stronger than the original tissue is that we would have never, ever made it if we got married after one year. Or even if we got married after two years. And then I was, you know, I was homeless. I was living in government housing. Danger, danger. She was driving a Lexus and I was living in government housing. You know, fuck me, fuck my dog. I'm going to trademark that saying, so that's mine. But uh, now it's more subtle. <laughs> If women could be subtle, they're hitting you over the head with a rolling pin saying, you know, when, when? Or we can do our own special ceremony out in the woods with the flowers and the birds. Uh, or you can turn Catholic and we can have a Catholic wedding. I'm just thinking that you have to be true with your feelings, which I have been. And there's so many marriages that are so fucked up. If I challenged you, the listener, to name three instantly, bam, bam, bam. You know, hundreds of married people over 40 years, if you're 40 years old, instantly, bam, bam, three good marriages. Could you do it? How about two? You know, I thought hard about it, and I came up with two. My uh, dad's uh, great friend from high school, Gary and Bonnie Bannis, and <laughs> I completely forgot who the other one were. That's pretty, that's pretty sorrow. No. My girlfriend's niece's father-in-law. That's two marriages that I could think of after a long time of thinking about it. So and I respect holy matrimony. I respect marriage in a church dedicated to a God in a, in a triune form. He's the top and we're the pillars on the side. You know, I respect civil unions. It's so ironic to me that uh, Chuck D. Dobson, Chunky Dobson, who's been kicked to the curb finally, Steve, clap over there, who's been kicked to the curb finally, used to denigrate gay people for these outrageous fornication and promiscuousness, pride, play, uh, pride parades. And now the second gay people want to be married and have equal rights such as visitation, salary insurance, etc. He's all about them ruining the family. They're not promiscuous anymore. They want to get married, so they're going to ruin the family. 
So I was uh, taking the bus, because I don't have a car, up to the bookstore the other day, and I saw a car full of people who might be gay, and I saw the whole damn bus family's ruin for three generations back. And it just astonished me that uh, Chucky D. Dobson had prophesied that indeed that car full of people would ruin families everywhere it drove. It's a joke. Come on, really?